So I went by the recommendations from the American Academy of Pediatrics and the uh, College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. And you know, we go through recommendations with everything. I do the recommendations that they talk about with breastfeeding. And so I really wanted to believe the science behind it and I don't have any regrets. Um, so my name is Elizabeth Carpenter. I am a new mother um, recently of my second child in January. I'm a nurse in the cath lab um, at Mon Health. When the pandemic started, um, he, had, he was 15 months old and I was actually really concerned. I pulled him out of daycare. My husband started working from home. We kept him home. We kind of isolated and I, you know, working in healthcare, we hear a lot about the vaccines. And so I was really excited to hear when it was gonna happen. I actually was vaccinated the first week that the vaccine came out, um, I got the Pfizer vaccine. And I wanted to make sure that I did as much as I could for him. So I continued to nurse him even though he had turned two years old. So then that way we could get him as much antibodies as we knew. We didn't know much about how much it would cross breast milk, um, but I wanted to make sure that I did the best that I was for him, that I could for him. Um, and so now that every, that, you know, the American Academy of Pediatrics and um, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology promotes it, it gives me a better peace of mind that I did the right thing for him. Started thinking about a second child right before the vaccine came out and what we would need to do. So honestly, I had already had infertility issues. And so that wasn't even a concern for me. So being pregnant during the pandemic, um, especially working in healthcare, um, you know, I was worried, but I was vaccinated, so I knew that I was doing the best that I could. Um, through Delta, when Delta hit, hit um, I kind of increased what I was doing. I started, at that point, we didn't have as many concerns with supplies on N95 masks, um, so I wore an N95 mask and kind of went back into um, not going out as much. And when I did, of course, I always wore a mask but being vaccinated, I knew that I had a decreased risk of any harm to him. Um, I got boosted in September, so I was around 27 weeks pregnant at that time. I had an appointment with my OB, and so I had that conversation with him, and um, he recommended, if that's something that I wanted to do, is to go ahead and get boosted, so then that way I would have a high antibody load, and so then that way we would make sure it passed on to the baby. So the only symptom with all three of them was pain at the injection site. Um, it was funny because I originally said that my tetanus hurt really bad and that this was kind of in between my tetanus and my flu shot. But to be honest with you, I think my flu shot hurt more this year than even the COVID vaccine. Um, you know, I got COVID um, about a month and a half after he was born. He got zero symptoms while the rest of us in the house actually, I mean, I had mild symptoms. Um, but even being boosted, I had the symptoms, my husband had symptoms, and then my son, he got symptoms as well. Of course, he couldn't be boosted because he's three years old. So the only one that didn't get symptoms was the one that was, you know, that I gave birth to in January. So from my um, perspective, you know, really trust the science, trust the recommendations from the governing bodies over pediatrics and over obstetrics and gynecology. Um, you know, everything can be a scary thing. Something can happen at any time, um, but the best thing that we can do is prevent any illnesses that could be prevented by a vaccine.